Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to run a Django website and a WordPress website on the same server under the same domain name so that your main website in this case is your Django website and then you have a blog under, you know, slash blog or whatever you want it to be uh, served from WordPress. So if that's something you wanna learn how to do, I'm gonna show you how to do that on an Nginx web server. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Um, the website that I am going to be showing you today and the behind the scenes is my diamond price tracking website, the diamondapp.com. And up here, I have my nav bar. We are on the main page here. We can go to the features page. This is still Django being served, jewelers. But if we go to the diamond blog page, this is now WordPress being served. And I use the same header up here as the, the main website for Django. And you can, it's kind of seamless. There's, there's a slight difference that you'll see between the two. I could use a little bit more work as far as the sizing is concerned. But for most, uh, you know, intensive purposes, nobody's gonna know the difference. And then you can click on here, and this is, again, now WordPress being served here. So um, how do I do that? This this was a this was a challenge for me um, as I'm learning Nginx and learning how to, uh, you know, configure different server environments and all that stuff. Uh, this took a little bit of work to figure out, and I figured it would be valuable to share with you because I did a whole bunch of research, and there wasn't really a clear answer about how to do this. It was, you know, everybody had their own opinion. There was a bunch of rewrites and all that stuff, but I didn't want to get involved with any of that. I wanted a pure Nginx way to do this without any um, hand waving. So let's go ahead and look at the server, look at what's going on behind the scenes here. So I have a terminal window. I'm logged into the server for my uh, diamond price tracking website, the diamondapp.com. And let's take a look at the configuration file for Nginx for this website. So we'll open that up and we'll just walk through here real quick. Um, we have, you know, our server name, some basic configuration, and then the root of Django, the Django website, okay, is at this directory, okay? That's not where WordPress is. You'll see that in just a bit. So um, if, you know, there's a file requested from Django, from, as far as a static file is concerned, it's going to be served out of this directory. The sitemaps, that's a location block for that, our fav icon location block, and then slash. Anything at slash, of, as far as Django is concerned, this will handle that. And that is just basically um, a mapping up here to a Unix socket, which is located in that same directory for Django. So that's that. And then under that block, under the Django location block, we have the location block for our blog. And in this case, I decided to um, as you can see, if we zoom out a little bit here, name our subdirectory on our website Diamond Blog. And this can be whatever you want. It could be blog um, or whatever. So we have our location block here serving WordPress. And this is kind of, we'll just walk through again line by line, see what's going on here. So instead of using a root keyword, we're going to use an alias keyword because an alias keyword um, essentially maps this directory, this virtual URI directory to this location on our file system. So this is different from the location of uh, uh, Django. So if we go to this location on our uh, server, let's take a look here real quick. If we do an LS of that location, you'll see all of my WordPress files here. So we'll open that back up and that is why we're using alias because we want to map, <clears throat> excuse me, that location to um, if anybody goes to the diamondapp.com slash diamond blog. Okay, so next up we have our index file here. In this directory, it's gonna look for an index file by default. And then we have our standard try files uh, line here. So the URI, that's anything after the domain name, it's gonna look at the URI, the URI with a slash, and then I found it necessary to add, uh, repeat the same location uh, so in this case, diamond blog, so do slash diamond blog slash index.php and then any arguments after that. Um, within that location block, we have another location block for PHP files. So any PHP files, if it's, it might be obvious, but uh, Django doesn't use PHP in this respect. It's uh, WordPress is built on PHP in other words. So any PHP files, we want to only handle them in within the diamond blog uh, requests, okay? And 
in here, we uh, include our snippets for fast CGI. That's something standard and default, which is built into the Nginx. Um, uh, if you install Nginx from a package repository, you'll get that for free at this location. And then um, this next line here, this is this was a little bit tricky. So I do have, um, it. well, let me just go through it first. Fast CGI param script file name request file name. So a lot of people get tripped up with this. And I'm going to go back up here to uh, nginx.com and show you some documentation that I read through here. So this is a, this is a uh, let's just highlight this here so we can get back down here. This is a page about pitfalls and common mistakes with Nginx. So if we go back down here, most people will try to, if you're if you have a location block for PHP within a location and you're using an alias, most people will try to do a fast CGI param with a script file name that's document root appended to fast CGI script name. But that is definitely not the case. And you can go ahead and read through here at your leisure. I'll have this link down in the description. Um, what you wanna do essentially to get the proper uh, path on your file system so you don't end up with you know two slashes in a row is to just pass the request file name. So that's what we're doing here back in our terminal window, just passing the request file name. And then finally, this last line here, uh, WordPress prod PHP handler, that is our Unix socket very at the very top, our upstream um, for uh, serving PHP files uh, using PHP 7.4. So that's how that all works. Uh, I'll have that code snippet for you down in the description description below so you can copy and paste it and modify it as necessary and then as far as uh, if we go back here to the diamondapp.com as far as the design here is concerned how we kind of seamlessly go from django and this page to that page that is uh, you know a whole nother topic of conversation so if you want to learn how to do that uh, please let me know in the comments below I don't know if it was something that was worthwhile putting in this video uh, but essentially it's just using um, importing some bootstrap libraries into WordPress and writing that uh, that custom header in there so um, let me know if you have any questions about anything in this video. I'll do my best to help you out and please subscribe to this channel for more Django and WordPress videos. That's what this channel is all about right now. I'll have some videos linked over here for that. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.